welcome Could to. You turn uh, your mic on? Oh yeah, my microphone. I always forget that. Good afternoon, welcome everybody, and welcome to uh, Mousehold Conservatives this uh, Friday, the thirtieth of September, twenty twenty-two. Following our last meeting, which was our itinerant out on the heath itself. Um, first of all, do we have any apologies? Looks like Martin Shamir Ruth and Councillor Shamir Ruth, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so Councillor Shamir are not here, so I, I yeah, so perhaps one of his colleagues can apologise for him. Um, do we have any declarations of interest, other than the fact that we're all interested in being here? No declarations yeah, of interest? Sorry? Can I just say, um, I was lobbied by a lady um, via email about antisocial behaviour, and I guess everybody else was. I think most people have been. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, that's, uh, although well, I declare an interest, <laughs> what, 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 it's not on the agenda at all. Well, then. we're all interested in antisocial behaviour, so yeah. I don't think that's an interest that you need to no. declare. But it's and, the only uh, opportunity, yeah. perhaps, I had to bring it yeah. up. Yeah, no worries. I dare say it will receive a mention at some stage in proceedings. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Galvin. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, I did get that too and asked, and it's going to be on the agenda under ASB in the report. Thank so you. Can raise her mm -hmm. then. Thank yep. you. Right, yep. No worries. Um, do we have any public questions or petitions? No, no none. None. Uh, Councillor Pig, your hand was up, sorry. Okay. Well, there's not a declaration of interest. Uh, I missed the, uh, the site tour of Mouse Old Heath. Um, a bit later on, you'll find out what actually happens. So I'm in the uh, so I, uh, Will will be giving us a, a rundown on uh, the, the site visit, so not a problem. Yep. Um, minutes. Do we agree that the minutes from 17th of June are a clear and accurate uh, account for those who were here? Yeah, agreed. Agreed? Great, lovely. Thanks very much. Um, we now come on to management subgroup meeting dates. Do you want to deal with that at the end, Leonie, rather than now? Or? Um, it, it's just, it says in the terms of reference that the dates are agreed by the committee. Um, the two dates there are between each of the next meetings and um, it's up to the committee to agree those suggested dates or look at other dates. Right, well, I'm happy with those dates. Anyone else, uh, anyone have any problems or objections to them? No. Right. And okay. just to sorry, Chair, yeah. just to confirm that as Claire Cohen has stepped down as a representative from Mousehold Heath Defenders, it'll be Mario Maxwell as that representative who'll be on the subgroup. Yeah, we're very sorry to see Marion here, but <laughs> no, it's good to see Marion back in the saddle, so to speak. Yeah. No worries. Thanks very much. I've got to get out of jail on that, so it's all right. Uh-huh. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so we now move on to item. Oh, actually, Will, when do you, do you want to give a rundown on the item now before we go on to item six? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think that'd be a good idea. Okay. Thank you to everyone who attended the itinerant meeting. Um, I'm looking. I'm sure you can see. I'm looking much more relaxed now, as, as we've had some rain. <laughs> Uh, towards the end of that extremely dry spell, uh, obviously high fire risk, uh, and we did have some big fires up there. Yes, we walked along Gilman Road uh, and we discussed the litter bins, uh, and uh, I was pleased to say that a number of cast iron bins um, had, had been installed. Uh, this is something that we've been uh, pushing for uh, for a number of years, uh, and since the meeting, a further two cast iron bins uh, have been installed. Uh, Susan, would you like to say anything more yeah. about that? Um, we're planning to remove the cast iron bins from the city centre um, and these are the bins that we're actually going to relocate to Mousehold um, and um, the, the plan is to eventually have all cast iron bins on Mousehold. So in the next two to three months there should be, that, that should occur and obviously as and when they, they are removed they'll be replaced. So. Um, that means that we can remove all the plastic bins. Oh, that would be there. great. Yeah. Yeah. So that's mm -hmm. a real positive. And also, I mean, they're, they're, they're bins that we sort of invested in, you know, a few years ago, and I think they were quite expensive. So it's really good to, to, to reuse them in yeah. such a positive way. And um, yeah. 
this is sorry, I'm going to have to pass on from the defenders, but I'm really, really grateful for them. No, oh, that's really good. And, and many as you've got, they'll have. <laughs> well, because we've got just, more, yeah. Yeah, they're just too heavy for the people to tip, tip them up, so that's been a really good move. Oh, that's brilliant. Um, I think we've definitely got more than we need, and I think the idea is the remaining ones will go on the river side, where we've had problems where bins have been thrown to the river. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get the most out of them in the most positive way, which is really good. Oh, great. No worries. Yeah. Uh, then we moved on to the desert wildflower area uh, and we discussed um, the impact of the recent dry weather uh, and also uh, of trampling during lockdown. It was so so well used um, that the grass was trampled and, and it, it still hasn't recovered, um, especially with the, with the, the dry summer. Um, and um, the members agreed um, that we um, help conserve and maintain the wildflower meadow uh, by spreading wildflower seeds uh, and that occurred on Monday and Tuesday um, it's a good time to do it in the autumn uh, give the seeds a chilling off period before the spring uh, and um, a wildflower mix, uh, an acid, acid sandy soil mix um, was spread by over 30 cubs um, mm -hmm. from the 8th Norwich group which are based down next to the Norwich School um, Associated but they're, they're, they're based in the hut next to the Red Lion there at Bishop's Bridge. Uh, so they came up. Uh, we did some prep with volunteers before. We sort of tilled the area uh, that we agreed to, uh, to see. Uh, and, uh, and they absolutely loved it, um, sort of chucking the seeds around. And, uh, and uh, I said, I'd, I said that we, 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 we wouldn't have access to a roller because on the, on the information sheet on the seeds it said that we, we needed to roll the seeds to get good contact with the ground. Uh, so we've, but I said it didn't matter because we've got lots of small feet. Um, <laughs> but they took it a step further and started rolling around uh, <laughs> on the grass. So I don't know what their, their, their uh, parents thought of that, but that was, uh, that was really nice that they were engaged. And we've had a nice email we're back. Really, oh, yeah, we've had a really lovely positive email thanking Will for his time, which was really, really nice from the group. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. yeah. We, we moved on to the Gilman Road open space um, where we continued, uh, where volunteers, community volunteers, have uh, been continuing to use uh, battery brush cutter and scythes uh, to cut the playing field. Um, and we'll be bringing uh, to the next um, Conservatives meeting, uh, and it will be discussed at the, the subgroup, um, but also a, a report will um, come to the next Conservatives meeting uh, regarding the discussion we had uh, around um, a contract change where um, local members of the community uh, under the, the warden's guidance manage the wildflower area um, using scythes and rakes um, rather than a, a tractor mounted uh, a mower. Mm -hmm. um, and just for clarification for those who weren't on the itinerant, by scythes you mean the old fashioned sort, don't you? That's <coughs> That's right. Yes, 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 Councillor the Sands. They're, uh, they're they're sort of back in now. Uh, it's funny how things mm. go full circle. And I, I I'm planning to organise a a volunteer um, scythe um, day on the heath. So if anyone's interested in uh, in learning how to scythe, then. Um, but that's I mean that 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 that's the most sensitive way to uh, to cut the hay meadow, uh, obviously uh, with frogs etc. Uh, so we'll be looking into developing that more. Uh, we've, we've also got the, br br uh, the battery brush cutters as well. Um, so that's currently being undertaken. We then we then moved on um, to uh, one of the uh, HLS areas, the Heathland areas, uh, and we uh, discussed the continued uh, implementation of the Mousehold Stewardship Agreement, um, which um, is due to finish in October 2023, but it's looking likely that it's going to be extended um, due to the Elms um, situation at the moment. Um, obviously, there's um, you know it's being put on hold uh, nationally, so we're we're fully expecting for, for for that to be extended. But of course, we'll keep you all up to date. Um, so they, uh, yeah, yes, con continuing to. Um, to cut leggy gorse, uh, create bare ground, both which uh, re reduce fire risk uh, and also halo, halo m m mature landscape trees. <coughs> we called in at the vinegar pond uh, and we discussed the, the, the fish 
uh, issue, uh, and um, fortunately we didn't see any more goldfish in there. Um, <laughs> But the, um, the contractor, I spoke to Nigel, and the contractor who uh, removed the fish um, is close links with the Norwich Pond Project uh, and also the Environment Agency. Uh, and he suggested that the removal uh, happens on an annual basis. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll contact Norfolk Wildlife Trust and the Norfolk Ponds Project uh, and give feedback at the next subgroup meeting um, on that. Uh, and then we had a discussion about um, the fire situation and heath and management uh, and one suggestion was to um, install fire beaters on the heath um, such as uh, places like um, Thetford Forest uh, and I'm going to be meeting the fire service uh, in the next few weeks uh, and then again we'll, we'll um, discuss that at the next subgroup meeting. Uh. Mm -hmm. Is it worth uh, yourselves as wardens to have knapsack sprays? on your vehicles for uh, they're widely used by the country fire service in Australia where I originally mm. came from and were very effective. Okay, I'll ask that question as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. No worries. Uh Councillor Galvin. Thank you. Can I just um thank well on behalf of everyone because it was that was there and for that report then is a really really interesting to all around, wasn't it? it was, uh, mm -hmm. really appreciated it. Um, there were some worrying figures about biodiversity that you shared as well, about mm -hmm. the lack of butterflies um, this year. So it was, uh, in, you know, it was positive visit, so thank you. Mm -hmm. And I just say you email uh, everyone on the committee when you have your scything day, so those mm. who want to come along can. Right, okay, excellent, no worries. Anyone else wish to ask or clarify anything about Yule's report? No? Oh, Adam. I guess if no one else has any questions, I just want to thank Will and Susan uh, you know, for all their fantastic hard work. Mm -hmm. And for putting up with uh, Daisy and Riley on the uh, itinerant, my two dogs. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we move now on to. Um, item 6, which is Mouthhold Heath Budget Monitoring, pages 7 to 12, yes, 7 to 12, according to this on my papers. Um, is, are you taking that, Sue, or who's leading on that? Um, I can go through it if you want. Do you want me just to read through the points, or... Um, so... Did you want me just to read through? Um, yeah, if I'm guessing anyone people. Anyone have any questions related? Yeah, to anyone have any questions? I'm, I'm guessing people have sort of read through the report. Um, so it's to speed things up, it's easier if people got some things they wish to raise yeah. or questions about specific parts of that um, rather than just reading the report for the sake of reading it, sort of thing. Um, does anyone have anything they wish to? Question, raise, or whatever on the uh, budget monitoring report. What I would say is it's running out expected, and it's quite you know there's no we don't have any concerns within that the budget. So. So no surprises. Yeah. yeah. Um, Councillor Champion. Um, I was just curious um, with relation to the theatre productions going on in the heat at the moment. If that's if they've paid to use the space or if this is um, no, it's as, as with all um, large events on the heath, it's um, it, it, the uh, the theatre company were asked to um, work with the events team, uh, and um, but I, I I I'm not sure whether a uh, a fee was charged, but that's something that. Find out and then feedback to the committee. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Galvin. Thank you. Um, I just wondered about the, uh, it was a question from a resident actually about the, the pitch, that, um, the food pitch. They asked why it's not being used at the moment and who paid to. It might not be the right place to ask it here, but it's certainly a question I was asked to raise um, for the, um, the pitch in the car park and they said it's not being. 
Yeah. Um, well, I thought that, come up later. Do you want to raise up now, or because we did discuss we it? We did discuss. We yeah. Did, well, you, you had the. Yeah, so we, we will cover that now. Yeah. Yep, yep, okay. Um, yes, the um, shortly after work was complete, the uh, session decided not to um, carry on um, with the uh, agreement. Um, and, um, I mean, subsequently, immediately, we've had two applications for the pitch, uh, and we're processing one, um, obviously, uh, the, the one that came in first. So we're fully expecting the area to be to be filled shortly. In the meantime, it's actually a, a, a really useful area uh, to park for the volunteer bus and also school buses. So Norwich High School for girls bring a bus out every Monday afternoon and often the car park's full. So um, in the meantime, it's really useful to have that facility up there. Uh, obviously, we're going to be spending um, a large chunk of the winter on St James's Hill clearing the uh, burnt material. Uh, I mean, that's obviously going to be a massive job because uh, there's uh, there's lots of thick old gorse up there, uh, etc. Uh, so in the meantime, but we will again we'll we'll, we'll we'll feed back to the committee as soon as we have some more news on that. Yeah, it's worth noting that uh, concessions are run by people who wish to make uh, money, make a living at what they do, and if they're not profitable, then quite clearly they have to give up on the chap who recently, the most recent person gave away because they couldn't see a profit in what they were doing. But that's not to say another concession might come along and find that whatever they offer, you know, their major selling point might be something which does capture interest and they can make a living from it. So it's a case of we have to be prepared for these to come and go. Mm. And it's as simple as that really. Yeah, but hopefully they, they'll be, make a go of it. Councillor Galvin in the nature of a concession really I suppose isn't it that it changes and um, just to follow up the residents question was did, did who paid for it um, and is it just for my information as well is it the, the work to be done to make it did it come from the mouse hole? it did yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah it came from the mouse hole, so. Mm -hmm. so it's covered within our okay. costs yeah okay so anything else on the um, budget monetary Councillor Peak. yeah just one Inquiry that the government grants specifically uh, is that set permanently or will it fluctuate? Um, th uh, that's the uh, HLS stewardship funding that we receive every year. Uh, so we, we've, we've, we've got that until October 2023. So that comes in annually uh, as an annual payment in around about December. Thanks for clarifying that. Mm -hmm. And just a point, do they make any annual adjustment on that to allow for inflation or anything, or is it going to be a set amount throughout that time? It's going to be a set amount. Right, fair enough. Right. Uh, Councillor Giles. Uh, thanks. I was just going to add that if people think we're running enormously under budget, obviously the recharges to the NCSR are paid in the six monthly uh, instalment, so that's that's what it's so far under budget. Uh huh. All right. Okay. That's good. So I think we've covered uh, effectively the uh, uh, budget monitoring. So now we move on to item seven, which is on page thirteen of your notes, which is the Mansfield Heath management update. Um, who's giving the briefing or rundown on this? Is that you again, Ruth? Yeah. That's the rule show. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> yeah, so lots of activity uh, this this summer. Um, the work the, the, the work on my household is, is largely seasonal. Um, so as you can see, um, there's been uh, lots of survey work during the summer months. Um, apart from really sort of bracken management. Um, the scrub clearing work, most of the, the habitat management work ceases um, and um, the emphasis um, transfers over to events and, and, and also uh, surveys. Um, so all these surveys uh, in the management plan have been completed. Um, uh, the Common Bird Census, the Butterfly Conservation Survey, the, the two uh, BMS surveys. Um, there's been various moth trapping events and we're up to 270 species, so it's ho hopefully uh, going to make it up to 300 this year, um, but we had to cancel obviously two, two years of events um, due to COVID. 
um, but uh, we're, we're, we're aiming for, for 300 moss, moss species um, on, on the re recording around the other last 13 years on the heath. Um, the bumblebee surveys have continued uh, and I'll be sending the bee walk transect results uh, into um, Bumblebee Conservation Trust. Um, two back conservation surveys uh, were undertaken uh, and again the uh, results of these will be in the, the next report. Um, I mean just on, the, on that note, um, on the face of it we haven't analysed the data but it looks like uh, sort of bat, bat numbers were, were down this year in relation to the lack of insects because the, the surveys took place in, uh, in July uh, and certainly uh, due to the extreme dry, dry weather, bearing in mind that, that, that mouse hold is, is, is on uh, sand and gravel, free draining sand and gravel was, uh, as you saw, uh, uh, extremely dry. Mm -hmm. And, and this, 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 this certainly affected uh, invertebrate populations. Uh, but again, we'll have more figures. Um, we're putting the uh, butterfly um, survey data together, uh, inputting that into the butterfly conservation website. Uh, and we should have some 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 sort of better data on that about, about how badly they've done this year um, because it, I mean, me, me, many of the the food plants dried up in uh, in July uh, and it was just you know I think it was just too too hot for them uh, through 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 large periods of the the summer. Um, the flower the yeah the two flower surveys continued. Uh, one at the mustard pond areas carried out by the Mouse Heath Defenders uh, and also a survey on St James's Hill. There was a total of 1,167 community volunteer hours between the 1st of June uh, and, uh, and 5th of September. Uh, so our thanks to Defenders, Norwich High School for Girls, the Mouse Mouse for Tears. CCV, Good Gym, NatWest Corporate Group, uh, the Assist Trust, and all the many, many volunteers from the community, uh, which play a crucial role in, 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 in managing the heat. There's been a, a number of events uh, this summer. The event programme's been uh, implemented in full. Uh, there's just one walk to go, which is a fungi walk, uh, which is it's the 25th of October which is being led by the county, uh, Suffolk County Fungi recorder this year. So very much looking forward to that. Uh, like I said, there's been a number of, uh, of moth evenings, um, work, uh, workshops, uh, and, uh, and also a management and biodiversity walk, um, showing people the management uh, that um, conservators are undertaking on the site. And I think many of the other subjects have been covered um, by, by the uh, itinerant report, uh, so i.e. the vinegar pond and, and, and fires, etc. Um, and that's All right. it. It's All right. Just, um, I'll ask the questions in a moment. I'll jump in first, if you don't mind. With the, uh, with the bats, obviously their numbers were down because the insects were down. Are the bats basically still around, but just dispersed further, looking for food? I mean, I know probably more of an opinion than um, uh, you know scientific observation, but uh, yeah. That's an interesting question. Uh, I'm not sure whether. I mean, I, I, I hope that the species have moved to potentially wetter areas of the river valleys, thought marshes, um, local reserves, people's uh, gardens, people's gardens. Yeah. Um, but certainly, I mean, even the buddleia dried up this year. Um, so, and that's you know that's usually a species that can cope with a dry spell, uh, grow, growing on wasteland and things. Um, so, um, it's I mean, I'm sure in in, in future months, um, organisations there will be there will be information on on the effects of the uh, extreme heat and drought this summer. Mm -hmm. Okay, questions, counts, uh, council. <laughs> Marion Maxwell. Yeah. Um, vinegar pond, is it back to its original le uh, level or is it still building up? It's filling up quickly and uh, hopefully in an hour or two we'll have some more rain and <laughs> it will <laughs> and, and the other thing is that the, the waves and strays from New, Newcastle University. Um, they put a display on in um, the uh, community centre um, 
they're, they're finished with us now, aren't they? Mm. But apparently they're up in some sort of um, prize um, who might be mentioned. It's it is it, mm. But it was a really, really great um, show. Um, I think you said it, didn't you? Because mm. it was, it's absolutely fabulous. Mm. And, and I, I thought, really, we maybe could offer us and if they want to put it on, on the, um, in the um, museum, the mm. castle museum when it's finished. Because mm. the history of the... Um, and I found out things that was so surprising and I didn't know. Um, and, it, it, and I actually only came across it because I had to open the book because I had key and older for um, the um, centre. Um, yeah. Then I spent all day there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But it was really, really good. And, and thanks to Will and, and uh, your colleague because you cool. really did help me a lot. That's brilliant. Thanks for coming. Yeah, I'd echo that. And I'm just asking, it was only on for a day mm. and it was really quite an extensive <coughs> exhibition. But could it be, maybe they can't do it again, but they, it would be nice in the crypt, even down um, mm. here or somewhere, if, if they could be asked if it's ever possible. Because mm. it made the link with other places as well. Yeah. Which is nice. mm. yeah, that's always something we can look into. Uh, Councillor Chapkin. Um, I was just wondering if, um, well, to clarify, for the, you said about the moth numbers and you're hoping to approach, approach 300, mm. if I recall. Mm. Um, is that a cumulative number that you've encountered throughout the, over the years, or is that within one year that you've got that many species? That's a total, that could, could be a cumulative species. So, in your opinion, is it likely that we've got less species now than the cumulative number that we've encountered throughout the time, given the insect number drop that you've explained before? I, possibly this year due to the extreme heat, um, but overall I'd say that insect numbers have been increasing. Uh, I think many of the species that we find are associated with heathland, okay. such as heath rustic moth. Um, and also grassland and woodland glade, uh, obviously lots associated with broad broadleaf woodland, but the fact that we've been creating a mosaic of different habitats, um, I think that it's a, it's a really good site for moss. Um, and um, in normal years, we, we, um, we have lots of bat species, and you know, we have many, many bat. I mean, I, I, we, we, we only carry out two surveys, but you, usually we have high numbers of passes, and obviously on patrol we see large numbers of bats. Um, I think it's worth bearing in mind, it might not sound that many, um, but we, we only put the trap out for two or three hours. Um, I, I mean, most people leave it out in their garden at night, but that's obviously not possible on mousehold. Um, so, um, I mean, that's literally five or six hours, probably uh, two or three hours, five or six times a year uh, to get up to that number. So I would suggest that it's it's a pretty good site um, due to the yeah, diversity and, 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 and the man management that's been undertaken. Mm -hmm. Is it worth considering um, asking some of the householders, perhaps on Gertrude Road, who back onto the heat, if they would like to ha perhaps have a moth trap at the end of their garden, for, you know, some of the time. I mean, that might capture more species as well over a longer period of time. Mm. Is that worth considering? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, certainly, yeah, it'd be interesting to if there are people trapping around the heath um, to, to to know what 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 sort you know to, to see their species lists mm -hmm. uh, to see what they're catching. Because obviously, they will be largely from the heath. Um, mm -hmm. I would expect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we might be able to do a bit of a uh, yeah, survey amongst residents along that side of the road mm. to see if they'd be willing to have moth traps in their garden at appropriate times in the year, or yeah. whatever, insect traps of various kinds, I would imagine. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, no worries. Um, any other questions, comments concerning this from anyone at all? Adam. Uh, if people want to ask about the uh, the uh, boy races issues, they can uh, look at this. Uh, well, we're yeah. getting onto that in uh, any other business, so we'll we'll get. I was just considering you know more the uh, 
the species, environment, etc. Um, I did note something. Oh, lost it now. Um, yeah, with, yeah. When in the coming year, I mean, everyone will be hoping for perhaps a, a wetter spring and a wetter summer. Mm. Will that change or influence? how you um, conduct surveys in the coming year considering what's happened this year. We perhaps conduct them in a different way, perhaps uh, fit in a, an earlier survey or something along with the later summer ones? I'm, I'm hoping that that was, although they may become more Regular, but the, the you know the hot summers more often. You won't have these hot, dry summers more often. That um, it was it was a, an extreme um, event, uh, and uh, I mean I, I think many of the on many of the surveys we're, 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 we're we've got continuity and we're building up trend lines. I mean certainly the bat survey we've only done that for about around four years, so we, we haven't got a trend like we have on the butterfly survey. Uh, which started, we, we one started in 2003, uh, and, I, and I took it over in 2008 when I started. Uh, and the the second one on the eastern side started all oh, about 10 years ago, and already we're starting to see a trend line on that. Um, so probably we 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 we, we will we, we'll, we'll continue with those timings, uh, especially on the national surveys because they're tied into national projects, and we have to do them at a specific time. Um, but it'd be interesting to see. Um, yeah, I mean, how much things recover next year, uh, and uh, ha how much it affects the trend line. The trend line on both butterfly surveys is going up. Uh, it's in the annual report, uh -huh. I believe. Yeah. Um, so that's a, a really good sign, as butterflies are indicators of uh, biodiversity and uh, habitat health, uh, ecological health. Um, that, 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 that generally the biodiversity is, you know, is, is doing well. Yeah. And with the development of the heathlands, do you expect any particular species, perhaps have not been evident in previous years, to start perhaps making an appearance? Yes, yes, certainly. I mean, always looking out for, for new species. And as the areas slowly increase, then it, it's more, and the, the condition of the habitat improves, then uh, we're looking to, to, uh, to find more um, yeah, heathland, nasty grass and species, many of which are, are scarce and rare because. Obviously, it's a it's a rare habitat in uh, in the Greater Norwich area, and uh, and uh, and a scarce habitat in in, in Norfolk. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, just out of interest, I read recently in the Essex Serpent that people used to make a cordial out of gorse flowers. I'm not suggesting everyone <laughs> goes out and starts harvesting gorse flowers when they come back in the spring. That's just a point of interest. Um, okay, so now we. Oh, that was item seven, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, item seven. We now move on to. Is that the end of our agenda? Of any other? Oh, right. So we now move on to any other business. And I do know there are a number of things that people do want to raise on this, particularly concerning Britannia Road and the car park. Councillor Galhan, I'll let you kick off on that. Thank you. I think I'd probably speak for some of us here that have heard from residents um, that their evenings are being particularly made a real misery by lots of people in Britannia Road. Um, and they couldn't come to the meeting today, although I did say they could come to listen. But they did have some questions they wanted me to raise, so I hope that's okay if I raise them and I can also no. email them to officers. Not a problem. They're quite short. Sure short um, but there, there's a bit more detail on what they said. Um, so they mainly focus around, um, these are just some, some questions they ask, why is the <coughs> car park shouldn't be a priority? Um, um, do, is access to cars really the most important thing there and does the access of 1887 really even cover cars? That's a question you might be asking <laughs> about personally. Yeah. And they said, could could we promote cycling rather than cars and perhaps make a bike lane a part of the road? Um, they say access to the heath really doesn't depend on cars. They asked, I'm paraphrasing what they said, so I'm happy to circulate the 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 entire um, 
listed questions. They asked if it was possible to apply for a, a PSPO for the area um, to over to actually um, try and combat the vandalism, which they say is having an impact on species there as well. And they asked if it was possible to have a review of bylaws um, for the same reason. And they pointed to the environmental impact of a lot of litter. Um, there's more detail on that in terms of the impact on people's lives in the evening. Um, so ongoing there, there, I think, um, and there's a fair amount of people. I'm, I'm aware, I'm new to this committee. This has been raised before. I'm aware it's been dealt with, um, but it is an email that um, I was asked mm -hmm. to raise, so I'm raising it here. Yeah. Also, if I just add something in there, I'm certain that Councillor Giles mm -hmm. can then follow on from that. I had a phone call a couple of weeks ago from uh, police local to the area who are keen on introducing a public service order for the car park up on Britannia Road and a public service order is a specific kind of order, it only lasts for three months but uh, before you perhaps need to apply for another one um, but the public service order will remove people from the car park, uh, the original uh, intention was from about six in the evening to five in the morning. I suggested as I go, I've been up there with tourists and things before visitors to the town that perhaps make it from 7.30 to eight in the evening to five in the morning. Although I had a suggestion from uh, Marion this, uh, this afternoon that perhaps that could continue on to about seven in the morning to prevent people from parking their cars and walking to work and using it as as a cheap car park, but public service order on the car park will move people on. And uh, the police have told me that they will patrol that and they will instruct people to leave the area if they are there. Now that's only short term, but that gives us uh, some time to consider uh, what can be done and uh, achieved in the long term. Uh, we did have meetings at Pling Park Community Centre, must be about a year ago if my memory serves me correctly, and it was discussed there, the whole question of putting some rubber rumble strips of some description on Britannia Road itself. I suggested at the time about three, although in retrospect I think probably about four, two at each end might be in order. And they will have the effect of removing a lot of vehicles because a lot of the vehicles have got lower suspension and fancy uh, plastic body kits. And the people who drive those certainly wouldn't want them ruined by going over these rumble strips. The police are keen on having those. Uh, Council Birmingham, who's the county council of the area, is keen on putting some. There's council, county councils have an allowance for sort of minor works and she's keen on putting some of her allowance towards these rumble strips. There's been resistance from highways which as you know uh, is run by county and uh, I spoke with uh, Councillor Broship Colton about this earlier and uh, we've got a couple of things in mind, some people to approach. Uh, as I said, highways are resistant to this but it's not to say it won't happen or can't happen but certainly in the short term a public service order uh, for the car park uh, can and will be put in place. I do believe the police are already applying for that. But Councillor Giles, can you add some more on this? Uh, thanks, Mike, and thanks for the question, uh, Lucy. So we are very conscious that these issues have been going on uh, for some time. Uh, and uh, what there is the political will to do from the Cabinet is, is to introduce public space uh, protection order um, to give uh, the police greater dispersal powers than they have uh, currently um, in order to address the issue. Uh, before we could introduce, before we could uh, draft such an order, what we need the police to do uh, was to set out um, what actions they're taking today uh, and the effectiveness of those actions, and that's because. In, in, in introducing the PSBO, uh, we have to um, demonstrate that to do so has been reasonable and proportionate, and that it has been introduced after the full range of existing tools and powers have been deployed and not proved sufficiently effective at dealing with the issue. 
So what the police have come back to us with is they have uh, tried uh, to, uh, by going up to the site when they receive reports from residents, uh, to uh, use their existing powers to issue fixed penalty notices uh, for traffic offences and seizure of vehicles under Section 59 of the Police Reform Act. However, the issue is that they're, they're going up to the site in a marked police car and uh, when they go up there, the offences that were taking place, the perpetrators uh, stop uh, uh, carrying out because, because the police are there, essentially. Um, uh, after the police came back, uh, the police uh, then contacted us to inform us that they were uh, seeking uh, a closure order from the car park as described by Mike between 6 p.m. and 5 a.m. Uh, and that would be under the Antisocial Behaviour, uh, Crime and Policing Act uh, 2014. Uh, and I'm aware of uh, what our bylaws uh, say, or what the Conservatives' bylaws say. However, um, the, 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 the police believe that they have power to issue a closure order, which they would have to apply to the magistrates' court, uh, or would overrule our power as conservators, effectively under our bylaws. Uh, moving back to uh, the PSPOs, um, Tim Bacon, our community safety officer, has drafted two uh, PSPOs. One uh, which uh, is more narrowly defined than the other in terms of the activities uh, that um, it would prohibit uh, and give the police greater dispersal powers regarding. Uh, and what we've done at this stage is sent those back to the police uh, for their initial thoughts before we commence the uh, formal uh, consultation process that we legally have to go through. Um, however, there is very much the political will uh, from the cabinet and from myself to make this happen. Uh, it's a commitment we've made and it's an issue that we do need to deal with. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be a good idea if we make a note of this and have it put as a formal item on the next agenda and possibly also invite one of the or more of the local police who are in the area who'd like to come up and give us their personal viewpoint or the viewpoint from uh, the uh, Norfolk Police as well. That would, I think would be useful. So if we make a note of that and have that as a future agenda item, no idea. Does anyone, uh, sorry, Councillor Lubbock, my apologies. Yeah. Um, yes, that all sounds very good, but it does seem as though it's going to be very uh, labour intensive from the police. And I've been looking to sort of think, is there something mechanical like the uh, road bumps that would actually um, negate the police to be there for all the while? Um, Councillor Birmingham said she'd like to put some money towards them. I mean, do we have, it, have we any idea what these uh, these would cost? I mean, presumably they are ones that um, just get sort of um, drilled into the road. I mean, we've got them outside South Park, uh, outside the park in South Park Avenue along the road. No, well, there are a number of different kinds. I mean, yes, there the are a number of different kinds. Permanent but kind, but we're talking about the, the rubber ones, which the rubber I would ones, imagine yeah. are relatively inexpensive. Oh, that's those. what I was getting at. They, yeah. they seem to be, you know, yeah, I did ask for some expensive. pricing on those uh, some time ago, but uh, no one's got back to me. Yeah. I'll we'll seek that up again. And, because uh, I do um, think, you know, yeah. with best women in the world, she probably doesn't want to spend twenty five thousand on them. I mean, I think she gets about twelve and a eleven thousand. Twelve and a ten, isn't it? It went up to twelve. Oh, it went up to twelve. Yeah. I thought. Anyway, mm. um, oh, I, I, you know, I don't suppose she wants to send all of her uh, budget. Probably on not. No, but no, when, no. when a council Where perhaps is willing to say put five, six thousand towards yeah, it, it then makes it hard for uh, highways to sort of just say a blanket no. Yeah. Well they would say a blanket no yeah. unless the, uh, somebody's coming yeah. up with another five thousand. Well, oh, it's going to be more yeah. than that. I, I, I anticipate There's every it possibility that. that other councillors, county councillors nearby might put some money towards it. There's no reason why, for example, if all my amounts of both walk isn't spent Oh, I, I don't think that works like that. I, I, it probably doesn't, but uh, you, you have to, you have to argue the point, and I, which I do so frequently. Yeah. 
But anyway, I'm, I'm just concerned. I think that's a really good idea, but where would we get the rest of the money from? How much is it going to cost? Where would we get the rest of the money from? And it's there in perpetuity. Well, it takes to all if necessary, yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, I, I just think that, that, that although the police are very willing, what's to stop these people going somewhere else for a while and then they come back in six months' time? Well, they, they have to start it all over again. Whereas something, you know, I mean, have, have we ever thought about sort of a, um, blocking the road? That you know, blocking the road is another whole set mm -hmm. of uh, circumstances, and uh, you're talking about changes to the Highways Act and all sorts of things. But then and I did some years ago suggest putting a uh, movable barrier between um, the end of the Britannia Road car park and the residential area to stop cars from going through. But for various reasons, uh, a no no was, was put on that, although I can't personally see why. Uh, such an obstacle should be an obstacle, so to speak. Um, I think you know. It I think it would have the um, um, support of the residents because they can use Great um, Ketts Hill, can't they? Yeah. They go in and out that mm -hmm. way, and um, you know that would be music to their ears. I should think that you know you can't use a car to keep going round and round because that's what I think they, they do. They were racing around, racing yeah. around, round and mm -hmm. round. So if they can't do that, you know they'll go somewhere else. Yeah. I don't want to say you're going to get rid of them altogether, but they would get go from there. Um, and it's just another sort of perhaps a, a tool to look at. That um, Well, that's certainly something we, we can have on our future agenda. And if we have someone from uh, Norfolk Police come along, they can sort of uh, flesh that out and give some um, additional detail from their viewpoint. And in the meantime, perhaps uh, consult highways and find out from someone there who is, is in the know, who can give some sort of uh, firm, if not definitive answer. Uh, Councillor Champion. The point just raised with regards to if you move them on and then inevitably you'll have them back, they'll go somewhere else to return. I'm curious if um, the um, if the citizens of Norwich who are doing this antisocial behaviour have been approached and communicated with at all, if we've or are we are they too abstract or too menacing to approach and communicate with? And so I'm wondering if there's been any engagement activity conducted with these individuals. I've been told that they organise regular meets which means there must be some kind of organisation and communication going on. The uh, organisation is quite informal done through social media, so it's not as if they're a formal club of any description. And you're Have right, you they got will... any... Sorry, I mean, with, with yeah. all due respect, uh, I'm genuinely curious if there's been actual any engagement or any effort, or if this is purely conjecture and assumption. Yeah, the police have conducted their own engagement in, in that respect. So it, it has been... Uh, both considered and acted upon, but uh, it's not to say that it can't happen again. And you're right, if they are moved on by temporary order, they will come back. Um, it's in, in the nature of it. Um, but uh, you know, looking at long term, this gives us an opportunity to perhaps once and for all uh, take a long term view and put some long term measures in. But as you know, with um, various kinds of behaviours, they do occur and reoccur. You can't sort of say, right, we put these measures in and that's it for all time because uh, it will come back again in, in some form. You have to be prepared for that. Yeah. Councillor Galvin. Thanks. Just to, just to clarify with, with um, Adam Watts, there's going to be a close, the police are seeking a closure anyway. As well as the PSPO, um, and also could, um, I, I can pass on the details of the residents that have been in touch. But is the council writing to to the people concerned? You in touch with the residents just to let them know the facts and all that. Um, yeah, uh, just come back to you, uh, Councillor Champion. There has been engagement. Um, the residents themselves are in an informal group. Um, Friends of Britannia Road, um, they've been subject to, to quite a lot of hostility mm -hmm. from the people in the colonies. I've, I've been up there and I, I, I was thinking, well, you know, same, along the same lines as you, perhaps they could be engaged with. 
but they are pretty menacing, there are a lot of them, and when they clock a resident who is, you know, they know that they are trying to, the residents are trying to move them on and stop their activities, they're then subjected to um, punishments in the form of um, parking outside their houses, sounding their horns, revving their engines, backfiring their engines. Um, and one resident who came to our surgery the other night said they, they've actually been chased by um, one of the car meet um, uh, attendees, for want of a better word. So, so they're actually um, not just not being uh, listened to, they're actually um, being subjected to hostility. Um, Thank you. As well. That was the answer I Thank you very much. Those sorts of instances are a direct 999 call. Um, I mean, I've been up there over the years with tourists, and I've had people drive at me and had various altercations. I've not let people intimidate me. I tend to be a bit intimidating back myself, but still, that's another story. Um, Marion. Just putting in perspective, I was doing this for 10 years, and there's no coherence. To what they want. Um, you can't get everybody to be on the same end sheet, which makes it diff difficult. So we've tried all sorts of different things over the, over the 10 years. We've had, um, uh, we've done, uh, gone and talked to them and asked them to come and meet with us. Um, and, but uh, what I will say is it has, it's really, really got so much worse in the last 18 months than it ever was before because we could deal with it. Um, there was some time that the, um, the county council were going to put a chicane in, but they couldn't get a, they couldn't get everybody to agree with it, not even 80% uh, or something like that. So that there's, there's a lot of individuals um, and there's a lot of groups who do not want to talk to each other, um, but I think it's getting so bad now. They might actually all come together if we could. We could come up with something like you've been talking about, Jack. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it really has been the most awful. It was the worst thing I ever did because you cannot please everybody. And, um, and I will tell you, I, I I didn't laugh at the time, but I did when I got home. One chap came to me and he said, it's a wonderful place to live. I've always wanted to live here and I finally bought a house, but I haven't got enough room for my cars. And I said, well, how many cars have you got? He said, six. <laughs> I said, it's, it's on street parking. We, we, we don't have, um, they don't want to be paid for the parking. They don't want to have it. it, it it's all sorts of different people doing different things. But what I did notice just that in the last year, people are coming together at last. And, and that's, that's what may help. Mm. Um, and if, if we can get everybody on the same handbook, it would be good. Yeah, and we'll have to look forward to that in the future. Well, we've got this down as a, I would say, a major agenda item coming up. And uh, so it will be something to, to look forward to and to get our teeth into on uh, uh, our next meeting. Um, Adam, your hand went up. Uh, thanks, thanks everyone. I'll just respond to a few things. So in terms of uh, enforcement, uh, the, uh, we have been uh, in correspondence with uh, the Ministry of Justice about uh, the potential for um, applying a redeployable CCTV cameras uh, to the, uh, the railings of the old Botanic Barracks opposite the car park. Uh, we did first inquire with uh, County Highways about attaching them uh, to the uh, street lights, but because of the old nature of the street lights, I don't know the technical details, uh, that wasn't uh, feasible. Um, we have had extensive correspondence with County Highways, but it has been uh, frustrating, I think is probably the best word to use, and that's why I think we need to take uh, action ourselves because it's been a very, very uh, slow process for the county and uh, their strong indications they're not uh, willing to fund anything. Uh, and even if we were successful in obtaining external grant funding, uh, they would be concerned about the, uh, the long term costs that it would place on them in terms of the uh, maintenance costs going forward. So, uh, 
while, while highways changes would be uh, fantastic, and uh, while they seem to not be forthcoming uh, quickly, I think it's important we take action to nip the issue in the bud as quickly as possible. In terms of the closure order, as Mike did say earlier, that would be for a maximum of three months, uh, and that would be for the magistrate's court to decide. Okay. If no one has anything more to say or add, then I'll call out on Mary briefly. Just a word of caution. Um, it's, we're coming to the time when it starts. So the, the three months would not show us what, because in the bad weather it, it does, it's not as bad. You, you need to do, this should have been done at the beginning. Of the yeah, well, we'll, we'll be yeah. prepared for that and we'll have that That's, considered yeah, in our future it, agenda. I think it might, have got, I'm sorry, it might be a bit of a waste of time in the winter time because mm. it's not as bad. I don't think so because we'll, we'll be able to put measures in place for the yeah. spring and summer. Yeah, yeah. 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 so right. as long as we're ready for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, if that's the case, then thank you everyone for coming along to our Mount Old Conservators. Um, I wasn't sure when to, when to ask this bit, so we'll go on then. maybe I'm Quickly going before we do it. Um, there is something on page five about the public toilet refurbishment. Um, oh, yeah, we were going to mention that, weren't we? Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll do that do briefly you, before we formally close the meeting. An yeah. update or not. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, yes, um, we've just recently had a conversation with property services because they weren't very forthcoming with sort of quotations and what have you on the site. Um, what they've done is they've given, they've offered some different options um, which we now have to consider. Um, but there are other factors to that. I mean, one of the options that they've suggested is for a unit very much the same as what we've had put in at Earlham Park. Um, that we're going to put in Wensum and Waterloo Park for sort of freestanding sort of toilet unit where you've got two toilets and um, a disabled toilet. But that would have been placed on the other side of the road. Um, uh, and with that, you've then got the implication of that there's a lot of groups that, that are on the that side and then they'd have to cross the road and there isn't a crossing. So if we were going to take that option, you'd have to look at obviously the cost of a crossing. So there's, there's things that we've got to look at, but to, to refurbish, to fully refurbish um, the, the, the toilet blocks as they are is going to be a considerable amount because they're in such disrepair but we may have to go down that route but we've got to look at you know we're, we're currently in the process of, of trying to get some actual sort of monetary um, sort of information so we can make that decision because I think they're not listed the, the, the toilets um, and you know, if it, if, it, if it goes into the thousands and thousands, which it, it may do because they are completely rotten, um, we, we, we may then have to think of, as to whether that's the other option. There's no electricity to the, the toilets, which means we'd have to tap into Zach supply. That comes with its own um, sort of, there's, there's issues related to that. You know, is there going to be enough? How are we going to do it? Zach's don't really want to be associated with the toilets because they're in such... Disrepair, but you know they are where they're positioned. So there is a, a, a bit more work that we need to do, um, and obviously I, I don't think we can make any sort of decisions until we get some kind of monetary sort of valuation. And Will and I have to say we spoke to MPS this morning, and we're, 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 we're it's a work in progress. So hopefully by the time we meet again, we'll have a lot more information to to make those decisions. Because I don't know how much it's going to cost to put a crossing in if we go down that route and I think we would need a crossing if we were to take the, the, the option because of what you were saying about the, the number of schools that aren't really prepared to sort of take children across a, a road without anything in place. Um, so as I said, we'll obviously give you an update when we get some more information. Mm -hmm. You did mention the. Uh, I don't know why it's making me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry about that. Thank, thank you so much for that. and, and um, I don't know anything about toilet refurbishment or building new toilets, but um, I'm hoping that if it does result in the toilet facilities across the road, that the two toilets and the disabled could also maybe have the changing places um, facility 
integrated into that because it would be starting from scratch, if you like, rather than trying to sort of work something out with the uh, the toilets that I've yeah I've seen, yeah. I've seen them I, um, and Will kindly showed us around household um, when yeah. I was with um, Councillor Giles and had an, I've, I've seen them and I can see yeah. what the challenge they would be to refurbish. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You did have a short term plan as yeah, well. Yeah, we didn't do, you? yeah, we have a short term plan. I mean if the one thing I would say about the, just also to say about having the unit, we can bolt that on to the work that we're doing with Wensum uh, Wensum Park and, and South Bottom Park because we've already got the sort of the contractors and processes in place. So it would actually work out to be a lot more economical because we could use the plans and you know, and it would actually it would just be part of the project. They just bolt it on the end. So for a sort of financial point of view that probably would be maybe the best option it's just whether it's feasible with moving the children across but if we were to do that it would have the it would have a two unisex toilets and it would have a disabled toilet with all the changing facilities and it would be new and fresh and clean and very, i mean I, I don't know whether you've seen the the, the, the block at um park but it would be sort of not dissimilar from from that um but I think we were saying, obviously, these, this is going to take a little while to make those decisions because we need to get some more information. But what we will probably do, or what we'll discuss doing, is making one of the two toilets a bit more usable. There's no electricity, but you know they need a little bit of patch up, and even if it's just a you know a lick of paint and just a bit of a freshen up in the meantime. But of course, we need to be mindful of how much money we spend on doing that. But you know, it might be that we. We close the ladies, which I think are in a bit more disrepair, and make the, the men into unisex and just make it usable as an in, as an interim sort of solution. Um, but again, we'll, we'll have more information. We, we need to sort of work with, with a property service a bit more to, to even sort of understand how much that's going to cost. And then we will, I think, at the next, in November, we can perhaps bring those figures so we can have a... A decision on what we want to do. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a future agenda item yeah. too. Okay, if that's the case, thanks everyone for coming along. It's been an interesting and informative meeting and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you.